Here's a bridge from the 19th century. It runs across the Yellow Breaches Creek in South Central Pennsylvania. Blink, you might miss it while traveling the country roads. Blink again and the bridge might be gone forever. The Sheepford Road Bridge is a delight of design and location. You can see and hear something new every time you visit. The slow running creek has a way of marking its own measure of time. At first glance, it's as though time has stood still here. But look again. The bridge has been here for since the late 1800s. And uh, it, it's nice to go across it and see the stream, uh, the passiveness, the uh, tranquility of the area. Uh, I enjoy it out here. This here is one of the most beautiful aspects of our roads. It's a very peaceful place, very beautiful. I grew up um, coming back and forth over this bridge. I know I'm not old by any means, but um, just uh, little memories and stuff of the of the bridge, you know, coming up, dropping in a canoe, kayak, whatever, fishing, uh, floating downstream, getting out. I've been coming to this spot since the early 70s when I first got my driver's license, went looking for trout fishing holes, and I've been coming here ever since. It's paradise. We got a really nice little spot here. Lots of people come to the park and have a good time, uh, trout fishing, um, canoeing, boating, a lot of that fun stuff. Uh, what I call the memory bridge because it creates memories from both county, uh, York County and uh, Cumberland County and with the park that um, it just brings people together. To help us better understand this bridge, we asked a historic preservation specialist to show us around. Um, I'm Frank Grumbine. I'm the historic preservation specialist for the city of Harrisburg and I'm also an architectural historian and I consider myself an environmental historian as well. I spent the last, uh, the majority of my professional career working to preserve places that matter to us. What do you think is so special about this bridge? Are, are there any historical <clears throat> elements that are worthy of preservation? Uh, the bridge is highly significant in terms of bridge engineering and um, bridge construction. It's a single truss Pratt iron truss bridge and it, it is built by the Phoenix Bridge Company in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. There are very few of these bridges that exist in Pennsylvania, and it should be considered highest priority for preservation. So this type of bridge, bridge engineering technology was uh, pretty common in the latter half of the 19th century, but particularly to the Phoenix truss columns. They're unusual and rare. These, these bridges were made on site at, uh, in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. So these are, uh, I believe, I would say they're cast iron and cast steel even. So these are four pieces bolted together and then they're hot, hot riveted together with these rivets here. The, the character in which this bridge gives to the rural setting uh, here in Lower Allen and Fairview Township is, is, is unique because, like I said, there aren't too many of these bridges that exist anymore. I'm not a bridge engineer, but I identify historic materials and craftsmanship and um, understand the value in which these give to the local community. Obviously that's not new iron or steel, and, and we can see rust on other pieces. Is this bridge in structural trouble? This bridge is in severe state of structural decay. Um, the stringers across the bridge have deteriorated to the point where we should not be driving over it anymore. Um, but in terms of the historic materials of the bridge, all the stringers were previously replaced in the past, but the, the, the rest of the bridge itself is in, uh, I would say, fa a f fair condition and is easily, it can easily be preserved. These are the stringers. Um, and underneath they uh, are very, very de deteriorated. 
And then we see some of these members, what are they, are they the tr trusses, or th they're tension pieces, right? Yeah, those are, those, those are uh, tension irons. Um, those support the, the column, the, the Phoenix columns that are vertical. Um, and they, they, they distribute the, the load of the bridge out. From, so from an engineering perspective, there's tension and then there's, and then there's compression in a bridge. So they allow the bridge to be compressed and, uh, and, and, and uh, have tension on the bridge as well. So they're all in good shape and they are just really, they just need some paint and some tender love and care. Do you, do you see a lot of evidence of rust and decay here? Well, I'd like to note that a lot of these tension rods are, the, all these tension rods are all original and these eyelets are original, but all these, these stringers and these, these deck, uh, these deck, deck trusses, I guess they're called deck trusses, um, are not original, um, and they have been replaced, but there is severe deterioration on these these uh, deck trusses as well as the stringers um, like I said I would not feel comfortable driving a large heavy truck across this bridge in its uh, state of critical deterioration um, those are actually holes there in that bird aren't there yes there are holes down here and there are holes across the stringers um, holes are um, a subjective term. I would say they're, um, you could crawl through them where, where steel once existed. So the, the, the deterioration of this bridge has, um, is, is symbolic of the state of many bridges across the state. Um, yeah, I mean, are those members, is that from 1887, do you think? So these are all original to the bridge. These are all Phoenix, Phoenix, uh, made in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. What about these cross members there? Are they, are, are, is that original to the bridge? These, I do not believe, are original. Um, these were likely replaced along with the deck, the, the, the great. The bridge, in many ways, is a victim of poor stewardship, inadvertent and not. From the mid-1970s onward, much of the bridge's underbelly was replaced. Included in this work was the replacement of its roadbed with these grates. The grates were heralded as a safety feature, but they let salt from the winter's roads onto the iron and steel under the bridge, destroying it. Ironically, the 19th century work on the bridge is in good shape. Work from the late 20th century is helping to destroy it. Yeah, these are likely from the later latter part of the 20th century, and all these all these uh, tension rods and eyelets, and the, obviously the phoenix columns are all original to the bridge. Um, so the the majority of historic materials are in in fair to good shape, but all the replacement stringers and cross deck trusses are in severe decay. Um, and I'm not a bridge engineer, but uh, it's pretty sad and crazy, isn't it? I mean, the shape of this bridge. Oh, it's it's in terrible shape, and that goes to I mean, that goes to show you the the I mean, someone failed to do their job. Um, maybe not one individual, but it takes a community to identify these issues and. Um, but nonetheless, this bridge is, uh, has severe, severe uh, deferred maintenance, and, um, and that's why we're having this conversation today. After more than a century spanning a wild creek, this bridge was destroyed in very recent years. What happened to this bridge? Cumberland County, which shares ownership of the bridge with neighboring York County on the other side of the creek, says it only had about $300,000 a year to maintain its dozens of bridges. There simply wasn't enough money to fix this and the other bridges, officials say. As this bridge continued to deteriorate in recent years, they simply stepped up the frequency of inspections, 
with little meaningful funds to make repairs. They say they did about all they could do to ensure public safety. In 2012, they lowered the weight limit on the bridge from five to three tons. That's the lowest weight limit allowed by law. Any lower, and officials say they'll have to close the bridge. While we made this video, a steady stream of cars, trucks, and even a school bus loaded with kids crossed. Here the bus driver is told that the bridge's capacity has been marked down to only three tons. The school bus only weighs two and a half tons, the driver responds before starting across. All right, let's set up again. A few years back, Cumberland County officials announced they'd rounded up more than $30 million in special state, federal, and local funding to repair almost 30 bridges under their care. Planning officials conducted what amounts to a triage program to decide which of its old bridges is worth saving, repairing, or replacing. Rather than spend money on the small little bridge on Sheepford Road, officials say they'd rather invest in more traveled bridges, like some of these shown here. Not enough people use the Sheepford Bridge, county officials say. It's too costly to repair and should be sold or demolished. But it's not just about lack of upkeep money. It's also about priorities and powerful economic forces that political leaders in the area have facilitated. This charming old bridge and a way of life in the country has paid the price for these policies. The bridge, ironically, is a victim of economic development that had helped to spur more than a century ago. The bridge itself speaks and shows its history. Here's one of my favorite features of the bridge. These old guardrails seem like they were designed to keep horse-drawn buggies and later Model T Fords out of the creek. I also like these nameplates at each side of the bridge. They list the names of long-ago commissioners of Cumberland and York counties who proudly built the bridge as a gift to future generations and economic development. Some of these family names are recognizable today. This bridge was built in 1887 by York and Cumberland counties. The bridge was ordered from a catalog. Back then, these bridges only cost a few thousand dollars to build. Today, the bridge is still owned by both counties. This was one of many bridges built in another time across the creek in rural Pennsylvania to carry people, horses, wagons, and produce to market. These 19th century bridges were among the first improvements made by the counties to move people and farm goods across what were then wild creeks. 19th century York, Pennsylvania artist, Lewis Miller celebrated the building of these bridges and even the political leaders who put them up. In one of his drawings, Miller even mentions the county commissioners surveying for a bridge. He reminds us that time is a river, wide and deep. Not just places, but also people and time come together on a bridge. Artist Miller also celebrated the area's agrarian roots and the simple pursuits of country life. Today, other wheels are turning. Miller and those of his time wouldn't recognize the area and activities now at play around the bridge. So I think it was the end of July 2019, uh, we were down the block in our driveway and uh, saw some happenings going on and we came to find out that uh, Cumberland and Lower Allen townships were down here trying to figure out um, how they will address the problem of the turnaround down here once the bridge is 
uh, closed. So that's uh, when we first found out that it would be closed. Um, and ever since then, we've been trying to figure out what we can do to help keep it open. County Planning Director Kirk Stoner attended a township meeting in October 2019 to discuss the bridge. Stoner said he came to gather input, but it seemed to those who care about the bridge that he'd already made up his mind. Here's some of what Stoner said at the meeting. Uh, and now, uh, regarding the Sheepherd Road Bridge. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, I'm Kirk Stoner. I'm the Director of Planning for Cumberland County, and I uh, manage our county bridge program. So as we looked at the different options, uh, we shared this with the, the Board of Commissioners, Cumberland County. We shared it with your staff as we met with them. Our initial recommendation uh, to the Board of Commissioners was to, to close the bridge uh, when its condition warrants. So right now it's open, continuing to inspect it. When it hits a point where you know, it's unsafe for vehicles to be on there. We would close it. Another option we looked at, too, is rehabilitate the bridge. So go in, fix the components of the bridge that are failing, and try and bring it back up to, to a more modern standard. Uh, pros of that would be it would be a lower cost than a replacement. Uh, it would help to preserve uh, one of the, the older county, uh, York County bridges. But some of the cons, though, would be that it's still a single-lane bridge. It's still fracture critical. It still carries weight restrictions because we wouldn't be able to bring it up to a higher weight limit and there'd still be ongoing maintenance costs. And then from a historic preservation perspective, by the time we were done switching out the components that are in trouble, that are rusting, that, that have uh, problems, its historic character would be lost. So while rehabilitate the bridge is a feasible option, but we don't see it as practical, especially when it carries a $1 million price tag. Planning Director Stoner seemed to speak of the bridge as if it existed in its own little microcosm of stream and country road disconnected from its extended environment. But one resident after another rose to complain that the bridge was a victim of, well, a lack of responsible planning and sound stewardship. While we worked on this video, the local newspaper, the Harrisburg Patriot News, even ran an article questioning whether overheated growth in Cumberland County may be destroying what was once a high standard of living and a rural lifestyle in the area. With so much redevelopment underway, many Cumberland County residents are asking, has the area reached critical mass, the newspaper asks. Did you see the article in Penn Live this week about the lack of planning in Cumberland County and about how things are really starting to overheat? Yes. Do you think that applies to what's happening? Oh, immensely. I mean, this is a prime example of uh, that situation in itself right here um, you know you look down the road you don't see anything coming look that way you see the creek and the bridge I mean, you go five minutes down the road you you have thousands of condos going up. down the road from the bridge the township permitted a sprawling community of hundreds of condos and high density single family homes truck depots and warehouses have been proposed no limits to construction or traffic seem to be pondered by county and township officials. Making matters worse, running within a mile of the bridge is a Sunoco liquid petroleum pipeline called the Mariner East II. The pipeline crosses the road at the only other exit point for residents. Should the bridge be closed and there's an emergency with the pipeline, how will residents evacuate the area, they ask. The rapid growth in the vicinity of the bridge is hard to overlook. Runaway growth and lack of planning have taken their toll. The bridge can be seen as a sort of a canary in a coal mine to all this unplanned growth. So there's been quite a lot of development in this area in the last few decades? More than I would have liked to see. It's condominiums and single resident homes. Uh, the streets aren't wide enough. You can't park on each side of the street and then drive a truck down the middle of it. It's a high density. It's extremely high density. The compactness and the density is, is way, way more than is necessary. How many units are, are in that? Having a clue. More than I'd like. Are you involved with the fire company? No, I served on an ad hoc committee here in Lower Allen Township for public safety. Um, in that ad hoc committee, we realized that our tower truck, which is several million dollars in expense, uh, isn't able to get into the community down there 
because of the narrowness of the streets. So that entails that the township residents are going to have to incur a cost of buying a new tower truck. You mean a thinner one or a smaller one? Well, it's a shorter wheelbase tower truck. Um, there'll be more flies on as far as the, uh, the compactness of the ladder. So it would be shorter and uh, it, it may be able to get into some of that community. But your concern is if there was a fire, the whole thing could burn down if you can't fit a... The community is a vertical lumber yard. That's the best explanation I can give you. Changes in traffic patterns to newly built traffic circles and a resulting construction detour sent an increase of traffic over the old and beleaguered bridge. Google Maps even listed the bridge as a shortcut to Interstate 83. How bad's the traffic? A steady stream of vehicles passed over the bridge while we spoke with neighbors, interrupting the interviews. While we're standing here talking, there's a lot of traffic. Uh, we get probably several hundred cars across here daily. Yeah, and during the detour, it was into the housing. So that had to have taken a toll on the bridge. I'm sure it does, yeah, it, and it did. You know. Well, it's kind of ironic that, you know, Cumberland County, which prides itself on being one of the fastest growing counties in Pennsylvania, would actually take away a connecting bridge, the bridge that connects two neighborhoods. If, if we wanted to go into the next neighborhood, Fairview, or they wanted to come into here, uh, Lower Allen or Mechanicsburg, this is the way that you would do it. Now, there'll have to be a whole big turnaround uh, of how to get to wherever you're going. They just put uh, roundabouts down on Rossmoyne and Lisburn to, you know, handle traffic down here. We've seen a lot of traffic as a result of that, which is, is a little less now, but um, this, this area is now on the radar of anybody who used it during the detours. At the township meeting, residents got up to complain that all this increased traffic was destroying the frail bridge. The traffic has been out of control and it is increasingly getting worse. The rerouting of the traffic with Rossmoyne has caused a tremendous amount of extra traffic down Sheepford Road. You guys have to come back and monitor it. Most of them are extremely heavy uh, box trucks, delivery trucks, uh, in addition to the 18-wheelers. But you really need to do something about it because the bridge will be coming down sooner than later if we don't do something soon. And my main concern is I'm pretty easygoing, so I really don't care about the bridge open or closed. Um, I've even gotten used to the traffic. But what you are talking about, the weight limit of the bridge and what she had said, I live close <clears throat> enough where when the big vehicles come down, they have to turn around and come back. They do not turn around and come back. How much, I mean, is there a chance that bridge is going to fall in the creek? Because there are probably 50 a day. Our neighbor across the street has a bigger truck, and I didn't know about weights and stuff, but he said even his truck is too heavy, basically, to be going across that bridge. And there, there is every landscape business, every business is going across that bridge every day. My curiosity is, since with that detour going in, let's say if now 1,200 cars go over that bridge a day, what does that do to the lifespan of that bridge? It was as if the authorities would settle the matter by letting the trucks and the heavy traffic tear the bridge apart. One township commissioner living along the road even vocalized what was on everyone's mind. No, since the, the detour has been in play, because we live on the corner of Thompson and Lisburn, um, the, the traffic has been crazy. I mean, the truck traffic, the silver lining is that if the bridge goes away, um, the, the, it, everything quiets down. At the meeting, planning director Stoner announced that his office had already listed the bridge for sale on a state website. So, you want to buy a bridge? like the go-go 90s or something yes. what's happening here yes and uh, a prime example we had tractor trailers down here 
when the turnpike shut a lane of traffic down one direction and eastbound and uh, I turned four trucks around and guided them out of here back to the turnpike where they could get on to go eastbound. Uh, you know, PennDOT and, and, uh, and the Turnpike Commission didn't do a substantial job in the signage. <laughs> so the trucks physically couldn't fit under the bridge or they were worried about collapsing well, the no, bridge? Uh, I've seen a rudders truck going down through here uh, during the detour daily and going across this bridge. Like a dairy it, truck? or Yeah, it, it was a, a, a straight truck, 28-foot straight truck and it was 12 foot 6 inches, so he could fit under it, so I guess he felt he could go across. Uh, this is a 6,000 pound load capacity, three tons, and that truck in itself was probably three times that amount, four times. So by allowing these big trucks to cross the bridge, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy that they could collapse the bridge. They collapse it, they buy it. Residents and friends of the bridge started a grassroots campaign to save it and to talk about what they find so special about the bridge. I'm, I'm going to work hard to try to keep the bridge here. Uh, I don't mind if they shut it down, but just so it has foot traffic and you know, the pedestrian and bicycle traffic across it so people can actually use it. I would like very much for the bridge to be maintained. Um, if we could have traffic um, go across, that would be great because we do use the bridge on a regular basis. And if not, I definitely would like to have it preserved so it can be the community bridge. We would like to see that the two counties actually do some work to find a way, a will, to keep the, and preserve this bridge because of all the memories that are involved with um, over the lifetime. I have for over 50 years enjoyed this bridge. This bridge dies and gets removed, you know, all the preservation history and the aspect of it goes with it, um, something you'll never get back. I do enjoy the bridge, um, whether it be for ro continued road use or if they close it for walking, um, walking purposes or recreational use, I think it's a, I think it's a very good thing to keep. Well, it's, uh, it's been here since the late 1800s. I always tell people it's been here since before the Titanic, but it's way before that. And uh, well, just look at it, it fits right in. It's been here all along, it feeds into a lot of people's memories of growing up around here. And uh, like I said, I've been seeing it for the past 40 years or so. It belongs here. And all they really need to do is get the right crew in and restore it. And it'll be here for another 150 years. So let's get, let's get on it, let's do that. While I understand and, uh, and value um, new construction and new growth, it's also imperative to, for us to understand the value that these historic and cultural places have in our lives. I'd just like to add that bridges connect people and bridges historically have been a connection between communities, places, and have been symbolic in terms of humanity's attempt to reach across and connect with others. And this, is, this bridge is just that. It was built to connect people. It was built to transport goods. It was built to be part of our lives. And the loss of this bridge, the removal of this bridge, will severely deteriorate our, uh, the way in which we interpret our environment and the way in which we interpret our community. We, as residents of the community, feel that it is necessary to preserve this bridge for future generations so that they can engage with their past and engage with their cultural heritage.